Okay, so these are the different types of pillars Matt was talking about. So they have like a star-based one, and they have more uh, pointed ones. And it goes in like, depending on uh, how much, as Matt was saying, how uh, big of a load it had to be there, uh, there would be more points and then there'd be a different stone. So, I mean, obviously the di diameter would be bigger, so there was. Porphyry is the most strong one, which is red stuff, which is, you can see over there, the red one, right over there. And uh, then there's basalt, granite, and sandstone. Sandstone obviously being the weaker of them. And then here, um, you can kind of see how these things like branch off into like trees, and those things kind of like like leaves. You can see better over here. I also want to check out this porphyry stuff because it, it feels really cool. And it's just like, this guy was like 31 when he started this. Like, can you imagine at 31, which is like 10 years from now, designing something like this? Like, insane. I feel useless. But yeah, so like this is the stone. It looks like like a countertop kind of stuff, and it goes all the way. It's not smooth all the way up, but uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, so yeah, you see more of the leaves and stuff this way up here. And a nice light and that, and all the way up there. So that's pretty cool. This is Glory, I believe it is. Uh, that's the real entrance. So that's where the real entrance is supposed to be, but it's not done. I think uh, it's the side that's least complete. Uh, Gaudi least, uh, didn't really spend that much time on it. But uh, this is the entrance that we came in, and that's the side that you saw where we were starting talking, and uh, it had that's the west side that I was talking about with that had Jesus' uh, crucifixion and stuff on there. So that's that, and uh, so this is pretty much the inside and some of the fun facts. I don't want to keep spewing them for you guys because it'll just be... I'm, I feel like I already spewed a few, although some might have not be as accurate as they're supposed to be. But I feel, feel they're pretty accurate. And uh, we're going to walk around the perimeter and just kind of check it out and see. So, um, we'll see you out there and then you can get a look at that. And then uh, Matt and I are hitting the town tonight, so that should be fun. So yeah. And beach volleyball tomorrow, I'm pumped for that. So yeah, this is the inside. Awesome. So cool. Impressed. So yeah, we'll see you outside. Yeah, so Gaudi was a genius, so a lot of his designs, like he had curved roofs and stuff like that, which he kind of got from the idea of leaves. And a lot of the things he developed, he got his ideas from nature. And uh, here is one of his quests that said, the fact that they have not been applied before and that I am the first to do so has made me think a lot. This would be the only thing that, in any case, would make me hesitate. Nevertheless, I believe that, convinced as I am of my perfection they represent, it is my duty to apply them. So like, there's like, this is the kind of models he would develop to show that it would work. So, he's pretty crazy, like how you can think of how to do that stuff. And I'm like, one second as I get there. You can see his integration of uh, a representation of nature. There's this uh, flower thing, and then what he would add to it. And then they have obviously palm leaves and stuff. So that palm leaves, and then he would try to integrate them. So it's pretty cool. That Gaudi is pretty intense. I would say he's he was a decent architect. So yeah, we'll see you outside though. Just want to show you that. So we're on the outside of the other side. This is still not the front, I don't believe. The front is over there, but here's another look at least of what it looks like. And they are talking about how they developed the towers or something into a cloister, so it kind of was like an organ. So that was kind of cool. And it said, like, the way he developed it, it would kind of soundproof the church from the inside so that, like, they wouldn't hear the mute or uh, the sounds of the outside. So, and uh, one, once it's done, it should work pretty well, they say, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, he's crazy. Look how, and like, look how intricate and intense that is. And then compare it to that building. Oh, that building, and then boom, look at that. So crazy. Awesome. Really cool. Impressive. And I have no problem. The thing when you, like, travel is, like, you see these buildings and you're like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, it's really cool that they built that, but, like, I think I've said this in a couple of vlogs, like, how many people had to, like, starve or whatever to make this thing happen? 
and it's like, yeah, that's kind of depressing. But uh, this one's really cool, or at least in my opinion. I enjoy it a lot more just because I know it's just like people giving donations and stuff like that. And it's not like the church or the kingdom or anything like taxing people to uh, get it done. So that's really cool, and it just adds to the awesomeness of this. So, yeah, I approve. Uh, I think we might go check out the front it, it's the front that is I think that's called Ori it's the least work is on as I mentioned before so I don't even know how much is done but uh, we'll at least get some video footage of what the front looks like and then uh, we'll be done so yeah check it out a bit so this is the uh, school you know that thing with the curved roof that kind of thing so it, it was a school that he developed that one right out front of uh, the thing See the waves in the roof? It's pretty cool. Check it out. I'm just I'm listening to the tour as I go through, so I can add any fun facts for you. Unless they have a desk, like uh, kind of Gaudi would sit at, and they say there's a setup of those are also plans and books that he was using. Not obviously the real ones, but. How it would be. Well, apparently, there's a classroom set up of how it would look, so we'll try to find that and see what it looks like. Maybe around here? So, some chalkboard. And obviously, the kids would draw that. <laughs> it's cool. And uh, believe it or not, the kids had Panasonic TVs in their classrooms. <laughs> No, that's cool. Awesome, look at the roof, that's crazy. But yeah, really cool. So yeah, that concludes the uh, inside, the kind of Sagrada Familia part, and then we'll go outside and give a final vlog with our thoughts and additional information, and then we'll take some more pictures from a distance so you can get a better view of it. So yeah, peace. Okay, we lied, last thing, we're in the museum right now. So these are, uh, Clay models made actually by Gaudi about uh, what he wanted it to look like. Different ideas and ways he would make different things. So he just thought we'd capture that and get it on camera. And this museum is mainly just talking about how even though like Gaudi developed the main ideas for everything, that there's a bunch of, been a bunch of people who have contributed and helped to its creation. So that's what is in this museum mainly. <laughs> Time lapse. Ready, go. Doom. 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 Yeah, that's so cool. Awesome. But yeah, for sure next time you'll see us outside. Okay, so we are on the other side of Sagrada Familia right now. And we're by a like, lake pond thing, so we got a qu couple quick pictures. So that's the video. And we thought uh, we'd kind of give a quick summary slash additional fun facts that we didn't get to munch uh, mention inside it. So, uh, Matt, would you like to lead off with anything? Uh, sure. We're just going to go through the nativity facade right here. Uh, what immediately stands is that green tree. It's a coniferous tree representing eternal life. Uh, nativity sides in neo-gothic style, so slightly, a lot different from, of course, the other side, which is more of a, a modernist style. Um, you sort of see the, the, side, the front part. This is actually the oldest part of the church. You can see that it's a lot darker. Uh, the stone's weathered. Um, some of the main hitting points, of course, you have uh, Jesus' birth. Um, below that, you see the, that little guy reaching over that bent-over woman. That's when Mary's being told by the angel Gabriel that she's going to have the Son of God. Immediately to the left of that, you've got Joseph and Mary's marriage. Uh, at the bottom of those, that sort of central area, you've got these two pillars with that have a tortoise and a turtle on them. Turtle uh, representing the sea. It's got, and then the tortoise closer to the mountains representing the land. Uh, da, 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 da. There's actually up there. You can see Jesus uh, working away, sort of a tribute to industry. You've got the killing of the innocent there. Uh, once again with the Romans. Uh, what are some other? That's on the left side. Uh, you've got hope, charity, and faith, uh, representing Joseph, Jesus, and Mary. Jesus' charity, Joseph's hope that, you know what, I'm not getting screwed over in this situation. 
and of course Mary's uh, faith in God through uh, all of uh, her trials and tribulations. Down there actually there's a museum underneath there which sort of shows yeah. a lot of the earlier parts of the construction. Yeah, we were in there. And the only thing that I would uh, add is is that what I thought was pretty cool was inside that school that we were in, um, the way that he did, he made the roof curve was they're all straight lines. He just changed the uh, incline of the pillars to make it be able to curve, and then so he would just like raise or lower the inclines. Uh, there you go, Matt. Yeah. So you can sort of see, and if you add more curves and say, okay, well these ones yeah. are going to go up like this. Yeah. And then as you brought that curve there. Yeah, but they were all straight lines, and one of the great um, architects of the time when he was around. Uh, said it was uh, something he show had great admiration for. So that's pretty intense. It speaks to how intense it was. That architect, Luc Corbusier, French architect, I believe was here in 1928, probably coincided with Barcelona World Expo, which I believe was 1928 or 1929. Another fun fact about Barcelona is over by Montjuic, there's this like little German pavilion thing, which is really cool, modern style. We can actually see a little loon. And, or is that a mallard duck? And then a tortoise actually under this leaf is what I think I'm seeing in this in Gaudi's pond. Uh, the other fun <laughs> one is this, is Gaudi's entrance for this is actually supposed to go out over Mallorca. Yeah. But there's a building right there. So right you got to see how they battle with that over the next... Yeah, so see where that white building is right there? That's kind of where, see where that scaffolding is? That's where the front entrance is supposed to be. But there's a road right there. And they haven't really worked on it that much. That's the least worked on spot. So I don't know what they're going to do eventually. They might just demolish that building and just like put some grand entrance way. But who knows? Maybe they'll just kind of cap it right there. I don't know. Like, that would kind of suck though. They just capped it on the end there and not really have a cool entrance way. Like if it was a nice apartment, sure. But, it's but really yeah, it's not, not even not a nice apartment. That's what I was thinking actually when we walked by. I was like, yeah, it's not that nice. We could tear it down. What were you saying about the acoustics and the organs and all? Oh right, yeah. So we were also we heard some part about the bell towers. So the bell towers were made, and I kind of designed like an organ so that uh, when the bell chimed, I don't know if you, I don't know how well you could hear it on the video when it was chiming, but it was super loud. And so it was designed that way so that um, the bell towers made like a perfect echoing sound so that you could hear the noise super clearly. So uh, Gaudi really wanted the noise or songs inside the church to be really loud and clear. So that's why you had like the, uh, that with the bell towers and that, the other thing with the choir. So pretty intense. So yeah, I think that's our summary. Yeah, just just good pan of this and we've got- We'll get a good pan. Boom. Yeah. Boom. What a building, eh? What a building. Super awesome. Hopefully finished by 2026, the fifth anniversary of Gaudi's death. The, I think the 100th anniversary of Gaudi's death. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Hopefully completed sometime. It'll hopefully be completed in our lifetime, so maybe we'll come back and see what our money p contributed towards. But, yeah. That's it. Peace. Okay, so uh, it's a new day, and uh, we are now just walking around, kind of getting a last glimpse of uh, Barcelona, and then we're going to be heading to the beach. And so we came to uh, this nice building, and there's a lot of, uh, not just Gaudi as an architect, there's many architects from Barcelona, obviously, and so this is another one. And Matt, if you could okay. give us a, cre a quick explanation. So this is a great example of Catalan modernist architecture. Catalan modernist architecture is very prominent late 1800s, early 1900s, when Catalonia was really riding its industrial, uh, the strength of the industrial age. Catalonia really took advantage, and uh, Spain, the rest of Spain was sort of falling by the wayside because they were trying to support even though they were losing their colonies, I think in Philippines and Cuba, among others, as they started to separate. So they were losing those export revenues. So Catalonia is doing very, it's doing its own thing, it's doing very strong, and there's a lot of this independent sentiment. And it comes through in this Catalan modernist architecture, which in many ways is actually a homage to the middle medieval ages, which in addition to sort of right now, since the Barcelona Olympics, the industrial age and the medievals are sort of considered the three golden ages of Catalonia. So this is a homage, uh, 19, around 1900, uh, it's called Casa Teredes uh, by Josep Puigi Catafalc, who's another major Catalan architect, and then the other one is Dominici Montaner, of course, in addition to Gaudi. This one actually very important. Uh, you look up there, they've got these little pictures on a few of these panels, 
You can sort of see the medieval uh, inspired design, very intricate and very elaborate. Just like Gaudi. It says, San Jordi, uh, who's the patron saint of Catalonia, Saint George, bring us our freedom back. So, you can really see that independent sent sentiment uh, from Ca uh, Catalans in this and in this architecture. Yeah. So, so yeah, up there there's the saint like slaying a dragon. I don't know if you can see it from that far. But yeah. And so, the moral of the story is, it's just the uh, architect putting something up there saying that uh, Catalonia should have its independence from Spain. So that's pretty cool. And uh, so yeah, Matt and I went out last night. Where, what were the bars called that we went to? Uh, the first one, the pour your own drink one, is called uh, Cyrano. C-Y-R-A-N-O. Cyrano. So there, you pay four euro, or well, we paid four euro to do yeah. it. And they gave us a full, like, the full, uh, like, 26 or whatever of rum. Should we move? Yep. Yeah, we move. move, move, move. But yeah, so they gave us the full the bottle of rum and, uh, for a four euro, and then you pour your own drink. So, like, you can make it as strong, which is what everyone does. You make it as strong as possible. So, and then we put a little, little bit of Coke into it. So that was pretty cool. Like, how many places let you pour your own drink? So that was pretty fun. And what was the next place called? Next place was Sumam, uh, Euro Shots. Yeah, there. So the next place, is Sumam. No cars, don't do it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so the next place was a Euro Shot place. That was pretty good. And then the last place we went to was called Jepitos. Speed Jepitos, yes. Yeah, that place is really really cool. Matt knows the bartender there, or one of the bartenders. Her name's Elena. Elena, yeah. And so she made a bunch of uh, shots for us. And they were really cool. Like, there was fire on some stuff. Like, well, we didn't do this one, but one of the guys had to wear, like, an army helmet as he was doing a shot. Some involved pop rocks. What else What else was involved? Some was, like, drinking uh, the shot that's on fire. I got you the Boy Scout, right? Where you light the Oh, yeah. One, one, you actually light a marsh... Uh, you roast a marshmallow over a lit drink. And, like put it into a, the shot and drink and stuff. Like, crazy shots. Well, and there's the Diablo one. That was pretty cool. They set, like, the whole bar on fire, and it leads it up to the shot, and then, the, like, they put some stuff on the shot, and then it explodes into fire. That was pretty cool. Then there's the vacuum one, Chippy Tasso, where it, like, sucks up the alcohol into the glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they put it on, on like, fire, and then they flip the glass over, and because of the carbon uh, dioxide, it, like, sucks the drink up into the glass. It's really cool. I might... Are we going back there tonight? Yeah. Yeah, okay, we're going back. I'm going to break my rule of not bringing my camera out, and I'm going to film... I won't... Well, we'll see what happens. I, I'm going to uh, film some of these drinks because they're, like, super awesome. It's really cool to see. So I'll do that. And right now, I think we're just going to walk around a bit, and then uh, we'll get to the beach. So, yeah, we'll talk to you later. Peace. So we are at the beach. We've been here for a while, but we're playing beach volleyball. Uh, we met up with Matt and a couple of his friends from school. So we were playing, and uh, I don't want to brag, but my team, I think, won every time. No big deal. And there's a bunch of people playing here. Those guys have the same net as us and the same ball, but like our net is like droopy a little bit. We don't know how they set it up. We wanted to ask them, but we chickened out. But yeah, this is the beach. There's a bunch of volleyball courts. There's uh, bars right here. We're going to get. We're taking a drink break right now, so we're going to get some refreshments and uh, refresh ourselves. Good go. And uh, yeah, so this is the beach. It's nice. And it's a good time. It's really fun. Just hanging out. Marcus and Chris were supposed to be here. I think they started like preying for tonight, like six hours ago. So we don't know where they are, but uh, yeah. Hopefully they'll be here soon. And uh, right now we're gonna get a drink, and then we'll be back to volleyball. So yeah, we'll see you in a bit. Peace. So we eventually ended up having eight people in the game. It was pretty fun. Some are left ready. It is nighttime. We played a long time. So this is the beach area at night. <laughs> and so we're heading back now. Matt and Chris went for a swim. How was the swim, Matt? Oh, it was, it was fantastic. The water was warm. <laughs> really salty, though. It tastes good. Oh, yeah. I always forget it's salt water. I did that uh, when we were in Italy. I jumped in. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's salt water. And I would just like to point out that I remained undefeated the whole time. Yeah, I played with you on one of your teams. <laughs> But yeah, it was fun. The Canadian team won when we were all, all the Canadians. That was good. And you and I were like, you and I were winning. We just switched teams. Yeah. It was good. It was fun. And this is the beach area in Barcelona. 
But yeah, we're gonna go back. Are we getting food somewhere? Uh, yeah, we're gonna go to a place by our house. A couple more details. This is actually a cookie. Yeah, uh, they, I, they it's hired. Open. Uh, no clue. They hired Frank Gary to design this fish. Oh. Me through the process, they realized that, you know, that the chairman of the Hilton was like, Yo, Frank, what's up? Why do all my clients have to look up a, a fish's butt? Yeah. And uh, uh -huh. so. Yeah, that's funny. But yeah, we're gonna be going back, and then we'll probably go out, and then tomorrow morning we're leaving at like. We're getting up at like 5 a.m. Yeah. There's a flying light thingy. But we get up at like 5 a.m. to catch a 7 a.m. bus to go to Valencia and uh, Jueva for Spanish Villa, so that'll be fun. So this might be it, unless we record at the bar, like I said, but apparently they don't let, like, they don't want you recording, just because they don't want, well, I don't know why they don't want you recording, but uh, apparently they look down upon it. Maybe we'll do it if they let us, but uh, if not, we'll see you bright and early tomorrow on the way to the villa. So yeah, talk to you there. Peace.